Hi, in this video we're going to create our first applications using Java Spring. My name is Shad Sluter and I'm your guide for this course here on web development using Java Spring. In this video we're going to start off by building our own applications. So we're going to first of all install the tools that we need to make apps run with Java and we're also going to build up a starter project and look at some of the methods that we have available for creating something from scratch. We're in part one, which is about the introduction to the tools that we're working with. As you can see, there are other parts that are coming, so you're going to go from zero to hero, making web applications in Java. So let's get started with our first project. All right, so let's take a look at the first app that we're going to make. As you can see, we have Hello World on the screen, and it is running on a web server at localhost and the port number here. So this is a pretty basic start, but we will get installed and make this happen. So the tools that we're looking for are called the Spring Tool Suite, and currently it's version 4, and I'm going to search for download. So relying on Google, this brings me to the Spring Tools. So the website here is spring.io slash tools. So we're going to select this first choice here, which is Spring Tools with Eclipse. And so this is a one package installation. You'll get everything you need here. So that's what I'm gonna use in the tutorials. However, there's always a few of my students that say they want to customize their own, like they want to use VS Code or something else. So scroll down a bit and you can see that there are other options. But what I'm going to install is listed here and I'm using a Macintosh, so I'm going to pick the middle option and you can pick the Windows if you, of course you got Windows. So on my computer, the installation is done. I'm going to go ahead and launch the application now, and you're going to see the splash screen come up. So the first thing that comes up is this uh, launcher, and it asks you where you would like to store your files. So this is your workspace. Where are you gonna put all your projects? And so you can see that I've configured mine to go into the documents folder on my computer. So you like the desktop, you like the documents folder. It's really up to you where you want to go. So you can click the browse button and then select something. So I'm gonna pick this one here and click open. And when I'm ready to go, I can either check this if I never wanna be asked again, but I'm going to leave that unchecked because sometimes I have different workspaces for different projects that I'm working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose launch. Okay, the project is up and running it looks like. So the first thing I'm going to do is go check the pref uh, preferences. So I'm going to go into the appearance and you can choose a dark or light theme if you like that. So I have a personal preference toward the light theme. It's just better for my old eyes, but a lot of my people that are watching the videos say, hey, get us, get us back to the dark because um, that light background is hard on my eyes. So I'm going to choose the dark theme. All right, so let's get a project started here. So I can either choose one of these on the side, but I'm going to the file menu because that's always there and this menu on the side will disappear after I create a project. So what's under file, new? So I'm going to go to a new Spring Starter project, and then I'm going to have some options to choose from. So the first thing you can see is the name. So it was probably listed as demo before. I'm going to rename mine as Topic 1-1. We're going to have several topics in this course. So the first option you can see is the Dependency Manager. I'm going to leave mine as Maven, which is the default, and then the Java version. So I have Java 11 installed on my computer. I'm going to leave it at 11. So you might have a newer one, but you cannot go older than eight. Here's another option that I'm going to choose. Uh, I have the package as com.shadsluter. So you can use any kind of package you want. Probably follow this example and use your name. So that way it's probably unique. Notice also you can choose a language. So we're selected right now with Java, but you can do Kotlin or Groovy. And so both of these will compile to a Java virtual machine. So Java is by far the more common tool for using in Spring. But uh, if you know Kotlin, go for it. We're going to do all of our tutorials in Java. Now I'm going to choose Next. So Next says, what are you going to install for dependencies? And so this is the advantage of using this uh, Spring Tools package because all of this is integrated here. So let's pick a few of the common different uh, options here. So let's take a peek under developer tools. We're always going to be choosing these same packages as our defaults. So get used to this. 
So we are going to first of all pick the Spring Boot Dev Tools. So the Dev Tools are something you probably want to have in every one of your projects. You can see it's about relaunching your application very quickly. So Dev Tools is a default. Let's see what else there is. So let's go down to the bottom here and we're going to be de developing web apps. So I'm going to select web. And the first one I want to check is Spring Web. So as you can see, the uh, options for Spring Web are pretty handy for us. We're going to be using the MVC pattern. It's the ability to build REST APIs. And so those are all things that we're interested in in all of the projects in this tutorial. So Spring Web will always be used in our projects. Lastly, I'm going into the templating engines. So templates, we're going to be selecting Timeleaf here. So templates are the ability to merge code along with uh, HTML markup. So for example, we're going to send a class like a product or user, and the template will take the properties such as first name and last name and address, those kind of properties from a user, and we'll be able to integrate them directly into the template and generate an HTML page. So you need some kind of a templating engine. You might recognize some of the other engines that are available, such as Mustache, which is commonly used in other frameworks. So with these three checked, I'm going to go ahead and choose the finish. Let's give it a second for it to install. Now we can see over on the left side that we have a new project. So topic 1.1. Let's go see what's inside of the folder called Java. And we have a Java class that's right here. It's called topic 1.1 application. And it looks pretty standard if you're used to Java programming. So I'm just going to try a hello world application. I'm going to do a console write or a system out and let's print hello world. So now I want to be able to run the application. And so as you would not be surprised, there's a green triangle at the top. Another way that I'm going to run is to right click on the project, go down to run as, and then choose spring boot app. So sometimes when you have multiple projects, you not, you're not quite sure which one's going to run when you click the little green start triangle. And so right clicking on a project folder is a guaranteed way to make sure you got the right one. Oh, it says you want to save this. I will click OK. So let's make uh, the console a little bit bigger and you can see that the string spring startup is happening. There are no errors. And then we finally have hello world at the bottom. So that seems to be working. We don't see any web pages yet. So let's make one. So I'm going to go into the resources folder now. So we open up static and then we have a place to put pages. So let's do a right click and let's make a new file and uh, let's go ahead and name this thing. I'm going to call it index.html. So this is not a dynamic web page. This is just a startup page. So we can create generic HTML in here. So in this course, we're going to work with HTML quite often and we're going to just create a static one right here. This should be standard stuff. If you don't know HTML, then maybe this course is not quite the one for you yet. So go back and check out some of the earlier tutorials that I've made for you on that. So you can see that I'm creating a standard page. It starts off with doc type, it starts off with the HTML opening tag and then the HTML closing tag. We're going to put a header in. So a header open tag, a header close tag, and then the title. The title is what displays at the top in the tab of your web browser. So it's not what's printed on the page. So this is the tab label. Then inside the body, we're going to put in an H1. So a header or a, he a paragraph header, and we'll say hello world. And then maybe a second one with a paragraph tag. That's the P tag. So make sure you open and close the P tag and say something about great things are in store from Spring Boot. And uh, double check to make sure you got everything tagged open and closed, including the body. And then we're ready to run. So let's go ahead and save this and go into the green arrow again. And let's see what happens. So the application ran and you can see down at the bottom, we have a problem. It says we had, we couldn't start. Something else was running. So what's running is the previous uh, edition of this application. So I'm going to the red box at the top and I'm going to stop it. And then I'm going to maybe the next one over, which says relaunch it. So this is supposed to stop the server and recompile everything and relaunch it. So let's see if this one works any better. Now, where's my web page? I thought I had it running. Well, let's go and check my browser. So switching back to the browser, let's go to the word localhost. And you press enter, site can't be reached. 
So what we need is a port number. So I'm going to put a colon and then 8080, which is the default port. And then finally, we get our hello world message. So we know that the server is up and running because of hello world. Now, this is just a static web page. And Java Spring is not about static web pages. It's about generating dynamically created ones. So in the next videos, we're going to create variables that we can insert into the time leaf uh, templates and have controllers and models and views and the whole package. So just a reminder, these are the topics that are coming up and some of the other things. We're still in the introduction to Spring Boot, but we'll be getting more advanced very soon.